verse 10. Create in me, O God, a clean heart. Give me a new and upright spirit. No one can access knowledge and the word of God without the agency of the Holy Spirit. At this time, we beg you, Holy Spirit, to help us to hear your word. Help us to speak gracefully so that as we hear your word, O God, may our hearts be united to yours and may our lives become a beauty and a wonder now and forever through Christ our Lord. Amen. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May we sit here, brothers and sisters. Once again, we welcome the executives and members of the CWO Lake Itinerary to our parish. We pray that you may have a good deliberation now and forever through Christ our Lord. Amen. This morning, once again, when we look at the sanctuary, we'll look at, you'll see our mothers serving the Lord. We pray that as you render service in the house of the Lord, may God's spirit rest upon you through Christ our Lord. Amen. This morning I have taken my homely to be the parable of the hidden treasure. Giving up all for Christ. The parable of the hidden treasure given up for Christ. The word of God tells you and I in Matthew chapter 8 verse 35 to 36, it says, it puts an important question to men of every generation. What does it profit a man to gain the whole world and forfeit his soul? I repeat. What does it profit a man to gain the whole world and forfeit his soul? With this question, Jesus confronts humanity with a profound reality. Your soul can be lost. Your soul can receive salvation. The choice is yours to make. How can a soul be lost? Principally, by not placing great importance on God. By not placing great importance on God. A soul can be saved when a man discovers true light. The light of revelation, the light of understanding what is most important in life. That a man can actually come to the conclusion and say, with his soul, with his mind, with his heart, that outside of God, there is no salvation for man. Outside of God, nothing is meaningful, nothing is purposeful. And a clear testament to this is when you see a man who is about to be buried, who's about to be buried, you look at him and you will discover that of all the struggling, the hustle and bustling, that the only thing that a man goes with to the great beyond are his deeds and character. The estates, the riches, everything, nothing goes with him. Naked he came, naked he shall return to the Lord. Says Job in Job chapter 1 verse 21. And Job understood this and what did he do? He worshipped God. So he tells you worship is a powerful spiritual warfare tool that you and I can use in order to get into the presence of God. What God enjoys every now and then is worship. Remember that as you worship in God, what is most important is what is pleasing to God, not about you. How can my life, how can my words, how can my service be pleasing to the eyes of the Lord? How can they be acceptable in the kingdom of God? These are the questions we must ask ourselves. And this is what the gospel passage of today says to speak to you and I about. A treasure which a man, when a man found it, and then in his joy went and sold all he had and bought that field. 
Now, when the light of revelation comes upon a man, the light of revelation understanding chances upon a man, your night becomes day. It turns from night to day because you have encountered the Lord in a spectacular way. That you are no longer the same person that went to bed at night. That when you woke, woke up, you woke up with a new reality. You woke up with a new message. You woke up with a new, with, with a new understanding. You woke up with a new revelation. Because light talks to you and I about wisdom. Friends, brothers and sisters, you come to approach God with a clear understanding and with a per perfect perspective. And this is what Solomon understood. That of everything else, what he desired from God was a spirit of wisdom and understanding. He didn't ask for more wives. He didn't ask for estates. He didn't ask for cars or other things. What he asked was what? Wisdom to rule the people of God. Solomon asked for the perfect treasure. The spirit of wisdom and the spirit of understanding. The benefit of this is that he will be able to rule the people of God according to the mindset of God. Understanding gives you insight to know what goes on behind the scenes. Perceiving why people act the way they do. Seeing people and situation with God's eyes and maintaining God's perspective always. Descending God's time more easily. Making the right choices for our lives and protecting us always. It brings you into the realm of wealth and what? Honor. This is the benefit of wisdom. That with the spirit of wisdom and understanding, you won't be led astray. It enables you to live godly lives. For the word of God says in 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 18, it says, But grow in the grace and knowledge of our God. Our Lord Jesus Christ, to him be the glory, both now and to the day of eternity. The spirit of wisdom and understanding helps us to grow spiritually. That you choose the most important thing about life, and that is God. The word of God tells you and I in Romans chapter 12 verse 2. It says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. That you may prove what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. That the most important thing every now and then is that you align yourself to the spirit of wisdom and understanding. The word of God tells you, and I more than material things, what will wisdom do for you? The word of God tells you in Sirach chapter 10 verse 1 to 4, and I read it to us so that we can understand. It says, wisdom will help the wise leader teach his people. The government of the intelligent man will be well ordered. As the leader is, so will his ministers be. As a mother who is wise is, so will her children be. As a father who is wise, so will the children be. As a leader of the city is, so will be the inhabitants. A king without wisdom will ruin his people. A city will only prosper through the wisdom of its rulers. The government of the earth is in the hands of the Lord. In his own time, he will raise up the right leader. Can I hear a better amen? Amen. More than our shouting, more than the politicking, more than the material things that we are running after, the spirit of wisdom and understanding should be our topmost prayer. Again, the next prayer point is that you may have the spirit of favor, the Esther anointing. Then the next prayer point should be the spirit of what? The presence of God. The gifts of the person of the Holy Spirit shall rest upon you. These three things will enable you to actually drive home your destiny to its perfect conclusion. Look at our country, Nigeria. 
Look at the, the, the whole nonsense that is going on. Breaks our heart because children after children are learning from the nonsense that is going on. Because of lack of wisdom, we know what is right. We choose not to take what is right. We opt for what is what evil. And then we are noising about shouting and complaining but at the point in time when we are supposed to take the right decision we didn't take the right decision every day one of the prayers that you must make every now and then when you wake up in the morning lord grant me the spirit of wisdom and understanding lord grant me favor lord grant me the presence and the gift of the holy spirit these three things are very important in order for us to drive home our destiny to its perfect conclusion the parable of the hidden treasure speaks to us about what we can give up for the Lord. Solomon gave up worldly things in order to request for the most eternal and the most lasting of all treasures, the spirit of wisdom and understanding. In the parable of the hidden treasure, we, get, we can get some wisdom. Number one, the parable of the hidden talent reveals to you and I that Jesus Christ is the man who finds the treasure and hid it again. And then in his joy went and sold all he had and brought that, bought that particular field. The treasure in the field represents potential believers who are in the world. Who are scattered all over the world. Those who are the hearing and the sound of the message of the gospel will accept the message. Now when Jesus has found and discovered this man, he hides this treasure. So he tells you that certain times when prayers are delayed, it does not mean that God does not love you. It does not mean that God is too slow. What God is doing, God is preserving you to your season of what? Appearing. That you may not run faster than your shadow, that you remain with God. So many times you go to the church and you fast and you pray. And God, you receive and there you experience the silence of God. What is God saying to you at that time? God is saying to you, walk more. Be more diligent. I want you to sharpen your tool. I want you to learn more. So that you're in the season of his voice when he will announce you as he descended in the form of a dove and then a voice came and said, this is my beloved son in whom I am what? Well pleased. At the transfiguration he added, listen to him. So there is a grace called to hear him anointing that can rest upon a man who has actually, look at the ending of today's gospel passage. It says again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of what? Find pearls, and then when he has found everything, he went and he sold everything. Now he says, Therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like a householder who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. So while you are in the secret place, while God is hiding you, you are not rushing your season, you are learning new things. Precept upon precept, line after line, line upon line, you are learning the ways of the Lord. Before Joshua ascended to the throne of leadership, he spent 60 years. 60 years. How many of us can be patient like that? 40 years in the wilderness with Moses. 20 years trying to rule and trying to understand the ways of God. What about Moses? Moses spent 40 days learning the word of the Lord. It takes time to know God. Know what we are doing in our generation today. And because we are half-baked, we raise off half-baked generation, half-baked armies, half-baked militias for God. Because it is the level and the degree of what you know will you transfer. Nemo that quote non habit. You cannot give what you do not have. It is to the degree that you have encountered God. Can you teach your children? Remember the word of God that I read to you a short while ago from the book of Sirach, chapter 10, verse 1. It says, The wise leader will teach his people the government of the intelligent man will be well ordered. More than the earthly wisdom, the most important thing is spiritual wisdom. This is the wisdom that came upon Deborah. This is the wisdom that came upon Daniel. That four dispensations sought for his what? Leadership. 
It is the spirit that rested upon Joseph that when he ascended the throne as the second in command in Egypt, he was able to guide and direct Egypt and every nation came to him. So while God is training you, while you're experiencing delays in your life, God is actually hiding you. He tells you that what is so precious in the eyes of God, God hides. God hides. When you look at the structure of the human body, what is the most vital and most powerful, powerful organ in the body? The heart of man. God hides it. Because anything that affects the heart affects the whole body. I pray, even as God is hiding you, may you never lose his voice in the mighty name of Jesus. The next thing is that he goes out. Now, Jesus has come to the world. The, whenever the spirit of the Lord moves, there is what the spirit of wisdom that accompanies it. The spirit of the Lord is searching to see if there is anyone who is wise. Who is wise? Who are those who are wise? Those who are constantly seeking the face of God every day. Can we sing that song? I seek your face. I seek your face every day of my life. I seek you in the morning. I seek you in the afternoon. I seek you in the evening. I seek you at night. I seek you every day of my life. That nothing is more important than your face. In the morning I will wake up and I will I behold your face. I seek your face. I seek your face. I want to know you. I want to know you. I seek your face. I seek your face. I wanna know you. I wanna know you. I wanna know you. I seek your face. I seek your face. Yes, I seek your face. I seek your face. I wanna know you. I wanna know you. I wanna I'm not satisfied, I'm not satisfied until I see you face to face. I'm not satisfied, I'm not satisfied, I'm not satisfied, I'm not satisfied until I see you, until I see you face to face. You wake up in the morning, you seek the face of God. And the Bible tells you the more we seek the face of the Lord, we are transformed into his image. And we continue to grow from one level of glory after another. That you're coming to our Lady's Tower of the Sea to worship God this morning will not be in vain in the mighty name of Jesus. You can't come into the house of God and you go back empty. You will never go back empty. You must carry a message. A word that will empower your destiny. A word that will activate your destiny such that you become a beauty and a wonder all the days of your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Luke chapter 19 verse 10 says, For the Son of Man came to seek and to save what was lost. And we know this popular scriptural passage found in John chapter 3 verse 16 to 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but do what? Have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but to save the world through his son. So how does God come to the world? Just as a point in time like this. The Lord is seeking and searching out. Who are those sons of God who are wise? Can you allow God to touch your heart? Remember again, he sells everything. Just for your sake. That he gave up his heavenly glory. So that you can move from one glory to another glory. Can we sing that song? Glory to glory. Glory to glory. 
every day of your life in the month of July, in the month of August, in the month of September, in the month of October, in the month of November, in the month of December. Glory to glory all the days of your life in the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible tells you and I in Philippians chapter 2 verse 7 to 8. But made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant. Prepare you sing that song for me. Be made in human likeness and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. What are you willing to give up for the Lord? That if you want to ascend glory from one level of love to a deeper level of love, you need to submit yourself just as Jesus did to the Father. Let us sing that song, Glory to Glory. As we gather, Lord, before thee, opening our heart and soul to you, May your spirit prove as we listen for your speaking. The way to have experience with you. May we find you as we gather, Lord, before you. Opening our heart and soul to you. May your spirit. And as we listen for your speaking, we wait to have experience with you. May we find you. May we never leave your presence the way we came before you. May our lives be changed. And I From glory to glory, from love to deep and love, till we become more like you. Take us from glory to glory, take us from glory to glory, from love to deep and love, till we become more like you. Jesus sold everything for your sake. So that you can ascend from one level of glory to another level of glory. I pray for you that you will ascend to a great height in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Now he buys everything. He pays the ultimate price. He gives, he gave his life for your sake. He went to the cross and he said that the less die. It is finished. What more are you seeking for? What seekest thou? He says, by my stripes, by his stripes, we are what? We are healed. That the blood of Jesus Christ pleads more insistently than the blood of Abel's. For your sake, he went to the cross. So what more are we seeking after? Romans chapter 5 verse 8 says, But God demonstrates his own love for us in this while we were still sinners christ died for us first corinthians chapter 15 verse 3 to 4 says for what i received now saint paul is saying to you and i to the church in corinth what i received i passed on to you as of first importance that christ died for our sins according to the scriptures that he was buried that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures now, having done this, 
there is a joy that he has. And now he grants us also a benefit to share in this joy. He envisions a glorious day when all his treasures will be possessed by him. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2 says, Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning his shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. What are you willing to give up for the Lord? Material things will give you temporary joy. But the lasting joy comes from your relationship with God when you love Jesus more than everything else. Like I told you, it takes time to know God. Not only taking time to know God, it also takes time to love God. To love God. Then the other treasure that we can discover is the treasure in the word of God. For the word of God reveals, that is a gospel, it reveals three things. It reveals the prophecies about your destiny. It reveals the promises of God for your life. It reveals God's protection for you. All these three are embedded in the word of God. That you can take time to understand the word of God. You take time to study the word of God. You take time to meditate on the word of God. Then you can be able to make declarations in the presence of God. Because you have the word. The Bible is a tool and the manual for every believer. If you do not know the word of God, then you find yourself actually experiencing some kind of low degrees of excellence in your life. But perfect degree of excellence comes through mastery with the word of God. Then you can use the word of God to address situations in your life. I told you yesterday during our Saturday prayers that when the devil tells you you're a failure you go back using the word of God in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26, 27 he has created me to be what fruitful I will not fail for I look up to the mountain from where cometh my help my help coming from the Lord who made what? heaven and what? earth if somebody comes to you and says you will die you do not become afraid you know what Bible passage speaks to you that it tells in Isaiah 54 verse 17 no weapon whether it's fa fashioned by occultic men or women whether by women in the witchcraft and covers and fellowship that no weapon fashioned against me will do what ever prosper That he tells you that according to the word of God in 1 Samuel chapter 12 verse 6 that is the Lord that advanced Moses and Aaron. Then he takes you back to Exodus chapter 14 that when Moses looked up to God he said why look up to me? Tell the children of Israel to go forward so you can make a decree and a declare that I go forward. My business is about to sink. I find the word of God in Psalm 23. That goodness and mercy are what spirit they can actually follow me. And ensure that I come to rest. I come to happiness. It comes from the word of God. It tells you again that every terror that flies by day or by night. The word of God tells you in Psalm 91 verse 11. He has given his angels charge over your life. So you can actually in the morning, you can command your morning. You say the angels of the Lord arise and go ahead of me. That you remember the word of God in Isaiah chapter 8 verse 18. It says, I and the children that God has given to me are for what? Signs and wonders. This is the word of God. More than jumping from one church to another. I told you yesterday, the church is powerful. There is power in the priesthood. There is power in the sacraments. These are the treasures you have. That you do not come for Saturday prayers. You are not. I want you, I beg you, come for Saturday prayers. I know you are tired of work Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Stop settling with this particular language. I am not a fan of loud prayer. Did Jesus not make loud prayer? In Gethsemane, did he not make loud prayer? Did Paul and Silas not make loud prayer? In Acts of the Apostles chapter 16, did they not make loud prayer? That while they prayed and they sang, what happened? The Holy Ghost did what? Came down. Who is telling you that loud prayer is nothing in the house of God? Oh, I'm a traditional Catholic. Who has given that kind of understanding? Does it mean that those who are actually praying, did when, when, when Peter was sinking, what did he do? What did, did he not make a loud prayer? Did he do meditative prayer there? What did he say? Lord, save me. 
So there is a time that when things are what that are, are, is about to cover you, you can cry out and say, my father, my father, hear my prayer, deliver me and God will come to you. These are treasures. So who is feeding us with this kind of understanding? I'm a traditional Catholic. Oh, I'm a charismatic. When the Holy Spirit comes upon a man, you become charismatic in nature. So he tells you that even as a CWO, you can receive fire, the Holy Ghost, that you return to your office, and then you are prophesying, you are decreeing and declaring that I shall not die, I shall live. The power of God is upon my life. Ah! Can somebody say a big amen? So who is telling you? Who is indoctrinating you? You sit down in your small circles and you say, that father is making too much noise. He call it noise. Wait. You will look for me. <laughs> there are powers. These are coming from what? The scriptural passage. The word of God. He has given charge over your destiny. Satan, take your hands over my life. These are treasures you have, the word of God. I told you yesterday, another treasure you have is what? The Holy Eucharist. The Holy Eucharist. That so many things can be solved when you expose yourself to Jesus in the blessed sacrament. That the more you expose yourself to the Lord in the blessed sacrament, you are actually doing what Satan cannot do. And so Satan is afraid of a man who comes and kneels before God. Show me a man who kneels before God and I will show you a man whom Satan is afraid of. I told you when I walked in Badagri, there was a time death, young people were passing out every now and then. And I said, God, what is this? And I told my boy, let us go. Join me in prayers. I will celebrate the mass of the Holy Spirit. And then I will expose the blessed sacrament. I will sit quietly there and pray. I have written out prayers. Then another treasure is the Blessed Mother. I had a little MP3, I put it in my pocket. And while I put it in my pocket, it was actually plain, simple word, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. While it was playing, I was carrying the blessed sacrament. And JJK was pointing the torch for me. In the thick hours of the night, between 12 and 3 a.m. While others are sleeping, even this my keyboardists and players here, they will be sleeping and grubbing sleep. I will move around the church. Move around the church. And then after doing that, what happened? There was no more death in the land. I pray for you. When you expose yourself to the blessed sacrament, every death sentence over your life, the Lord will silence it in the mighty name of Jesus. Visit to the blessed sacrament. We are in prayers. By Wednesday, the media team released the prayer again that we're going to have from Wednesday to Friday, fasting and prayers. So that when we come on Saturday, we are sharp and fasting is a wet stone that actually activates your destiny more than complaining i got to badagri it was difficult but you hold on to the four horns of the altar look at jacob he said i will never let you go unless you do what bless me problem has not come when problem come you that you say i'm a traditional cat you know it's good you will not know when you will begin to say, F -f 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 My father, my father. Look at a girl who came to give the program yesterday, came to, came to speak to us yesterday. She was not a lover of what? Charismatic. She was always reading her Bible. Yes. But when the Holy Spirit came, 
It says in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1, verse 8, when the spirit of truth comes, you be what? Feel be what? Power. And then you become what? My witnesses. So you cannot worship God in the flesh. You can only worship God in the spirit. It is only when you worship God in the flesh will you be given all these kind of excuses. Oh, prayer is too long. Oh, I'm tired. I beg. I'm not there for this one. Don't worry. The devil that you think is not there is just waiting for just one opportunity to strike. But there is a particular grace. There is a particular weapon. And that is the blood of Jesus that can cover you. That the serpent can only bite when there is a crack in the wall. The devil will not destroy your lives. In the name of Jesus. These are treasures. The treasures that we have. The treasures of the Holy Spirit is also another treasure we have in the church. But the principal treasure that Jesus is talking about today in the gospel passage is that Jesus Christ is a treasure. The perfect treasure any man can have. If I have Jesus, remember, look at what we have drawn here. With Jesus in the boat, my family cannot what? Capsize. With Mother Mary in the boat, interceding for us, we will never fail. The second thing Jesus spoke about is the word of God. But then we can actually make inclusions. Then we can talk about the Holy Spirit as a treasure. We can talk about the Blessed Mother as a treasure. We can talk about the cult of saints as a treasure. We can talk about prayer. St. John Mary Vianney says, if you do not pray, you are actually giving the enemy the opportunity over you. But you will tell yourself, I will pray, I will pray. I will pray, I will pray. I will pray in the morning, I will pray in the afternoon, I will pray in the evening, I will pray at night. I will pray. I will pray, oh, I will pray. If I don't pray, Satan will make mess of me. I will pray, I will pray, I will pray, oh, I will pray. If I don't pray, Satan will make mess of me. One more time, I will pray, I will pray. The only thing you can send to your future and to wait for you is prayer. You can send prayer to what? August. And then your destiny, he prepares your destiny helper for you. That you only just arrive in the, in the month of August and destiny helpers from right to left and center will begin to locate your destiny. Can somebody say a big amen in the name of Jesus? You can actually send prayer and say in the month of December, that is the emperor month, that no child of mine will ever die. Amen. And the only thing that you are going to do is just you are going to walk into it. They call it prepared blessings. Very important for you to pray. Mothers, more than anything that you are going to discuss today, talk about prayer as a virtue. You see, when there is no presence of the Holy Spirit, there will be competition, jealousies, gossip and all those nonsense. Let what you are coming to discuss be a celebration of values. Let it be that you are actually praying and asking God his mercy, strengthen our families. We need women like Deborah, like Ruth, like Lemon Naomi, who will stand in the gap. Women that are filled with the Holy Spirit, like Anna the prophetess, who will stand in the gap and pray for our generation. We need men and women like that. Not what we are doing today. We need powerful, strong women who can stand behind the priest and say, Father, as you are walking in the house of God, you will not fail. We will continue to push you forward. You can raise children. We need godly mothers to raise godly children. Not what we are doing today. Look at confusion everywhere. We are praying that the Lord may vindicate Nigeria. 
You didn't say that, amen. You see, wait, 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 wait. You need to say that, amen. Let the prison gate be open. You will say, amen. The Lord in his mercy will deliver Nigeria in the name of Jesus. The Lord will deliver us. You know, some people, when they are saying amen, they are very ashamed to say amen. They will keep their face like flint. If you like, don't say amen. I will say amen on your behalf. God will deliver us in the mighty name of Jesus. <laughs> Can somebody shout a big hallelujah? We are moving from glory to glory. Nigeria is a blessed country. Yo. A blessed country. Look at which everything that is happening, we are still what? Patient. Trusting God. Trusting God. Those who wait on the Lord are like Mount Zion that cannot be what? Shaking. Now that does not tell you that you'll be lazy. You must do your work. Work, pray. And the Lord will act. The Lord will act on our behalf in the name of Jesus. So you have heard, what can you give up to the Lord for the Lord? Can you give up laziness and procrastination and take up your spiritual life very seriously? Can you give up giving excuses and say, let me come for mass in the morning? Let me study the word of God at least one hour or 30 minutes a day. Can I do that? Can I leave those circle of friends who are not helping me to advance spiritually, but only there telling me many things that fly in the air and fly beneath the ground? Can I sit down with men and women who can talk to me about God? Can I take my time to pray about my life, my family? Pray about my children? Pray about their, my generation. Can I take a time to do this? These are the treasures the Lord is asking us to seek. Whatever you actually play, where you place your heart, there is, that's, that's where your treasure is. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak it. You will know a man who has placed value on God by his words. But a man who thinks relies on material things, oh, I have money. Oh, I have estates. <laughs> Go out with those who have gone ahead of you. Who also had the same thing? How did they end? Let us continue to beg God to release his grace upon us. Fathers, your wife is praying. Stop fighting her. Let her pray. Mothers, your husband is not praying. Pray on his behalf. Continue to intercede until he has a get, gets that encounter like Paul, like Saul, and then he will have a metanoia, and then he will return and he come to take his rightful place, his rightful position as the Adam, as the what, the Christ in his home, as a priest of his home, to actually call forth everyone and then pray. Remember the word of Joshua as long as I live, I and my family will do what? Serve the Lord. So he didn't say wife, he said the man. He said, I and my what? My family. Because you are the seed giver. You are the anchor. You are the president of your home. He can make that call. I say, I and what? My family will do what? Serve the Lord. So everything about me must come under obedience of Christ. And as we continue to come under the obedience of Christ, grace will multiply. May the grace of the Lord multiply in our life. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be and abide with us now and forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I seek your face. I seek your face. I want to know you. I want to know you. I seek your face. I seek your face. I seek your face. I want to know you. I want to know you. I want to know you. I am not satisfied. I'm not satisfied. I'm not satisfied. Until I see. Until I see. 
face to face I'm not satisfied I'm not satisfied Until I see you Face to face I'm not satisfied I'm not satisfied Until I see you Face to face May the words we have heard this morning produce a lasting fruit in our lives, both now and forever through Christ our Lord. May we rise now and profess our faith.